Hi guys, today we are going to do some more work with decimals. Yesterday you learned with Miss Lanning how to read a decimal. Today we're going to review that and then we're going to learn, I wonder how do we write decimals? When we see decimals written in words, how do we translate that or make that a decimal? So let's review from yesterday. Yesterday you learned that here we have six tenths. You learned that you have zero holes. The decimal lets you know that you are in the tenths, which is a fraction. And the six is in the tenths place. So you say six tenths. You say the name of the place value that it's in. Let's look at this next one. We can tell that there are zero holes and our decimal point lets us know that everything else is a part of a whole. So you learned yesterday that you say what's after the decimal together, so you say 74, and then you add the word hundredths because that is the last place value you're in. Let's look at the next one. We know that after the decimal point, you say what you see back there, so it is a four, okay? So you'd say four hundredths. And we have a zero in that tenths place because we don't have any tenths. You can't just write a four in the hundredths place. You have to show that zero as a placeholder. You also learned yesterday when you have a mixed number or a fraction that has some holes. So when you said that one, you said your whole first, then you said and for the decimal point, and then you said what was after the decimal point, eight tenths. So let's work on when we see the word, the decimal in words, how do we write that in decimal form? So let's look at the first one. It says zero and three tenths. So I would write, zero and I put the decimal point for the and and then three tenths. But normally when people write decimals in words, they put, don't put the zero and in front if there are no holes. So we just assume if you don't have a number and the word and for the decimal point that there are no holes. So we'd have to represent it with a zero in your decimal point. So let's try this one. We have 15 hundredths. Notice there's no and and there's no whole numbers. We just have 15 hundredths. So what I know is that I'm automatically gonna put my zero on my decimal point that lets me know I have zero holes. And then I have 15 hundredths. So I'm going to put my 15 behind there. Notice my 15, my whole number 15, and this is the whole number 15. But notice that my last digit in my, fi my 15, the five, is in the hundredths place. So I would say 15 hundredths. Let's try another one. I have three and seven tenths. This part and lets me know that what's before it is my holes. So I would write my three, then my decimal point for and lets me know I'm switching over to the decimal side. It says seven tenths. So in the back I need to see the number seven and it needs to be only in my tenths place. Let's try one more. Three and seven hundredths. This is very similar looking than the, the one right before it, the three and seven tenths. But let's watch how we do something different. So we have our and, so that mean, lets me know that what's before it is our whole number. So I have three and, that's where I put my decimal point, like you learned yesterday. Then I have seven hundredths. But if you notice, I have to see a seven back here but it has to be in the hundredth spot. So that means I have to put a zero in my tenth spot, and then my seven goes in my seventh spot. Notice how these two, the three and seven tenths, looks different than three and seven hundredths. My zero is in the tenths place instead of that seven. Let's try some more. 92 hundredths. Remember, when we don't have that and with something in front of it, we just assume we have zero holes. So I have zero and my decimal point. Notice that 92 is my number, so I see 92 back here, and it ends in my hundredth spot, so I have 92 hundredths. Then I have nine hundredths. Again, I don't have any holes. In my nine, I have to see the nine in my decimal place value, and it needs to be in the hundredth spot. So notice that my nine is in my hundredth spot, and I have to put a zero in the tenth spot as a placeholder. We don't have any tenths, we only have hundredths. 
Let's try this one. This is a big one. 21 and 43 hundredths. So what that and tells me is that what's before it is my whole. So I have 21 and is going to be my decimal point. And then behind it, I need to see the number 43 and it has to go into my hundredths place value. I can't go past my hundredths place value. Notice that 43 is back here and it ends in my hundredths place. So I have 21 and 43 hundredths. Let's try one more. 13 and 6 tenths. So my 13 is my whole, my and is my decimal point, and then I have to have 6 tenths behind it. So I have 13 in, my, in front, my whole number, my decimal point for the and, and then 6 tenths. So that number 6 right here is in the tenths place. So my 6 is in the tenths place. I don't have any hundredths, so I'm not going to put anything there. Today, you are going to do some practice on your own. You will see um, your decimal written in word form, and then you will need to write it in decimal form. Remember, when you don't have any holes, we put a zero in front so we can notice that decimal there. So it lets us know like, hey, I don't have any. We just don't say the zero. Good luck on your practice today.